Hi everyone, my name is Ken McMahon. Welcome to this Go Paint Shop Pro tutorial on colour management. Uh, what I'm going to run through in this tutorial is how to set up colour management in Paint Shop Pro so you can print reasonably reliably. It's a difficult thing to do. Colour management's a complex thing. A lot of people try to set it up and give up in frustration when they can't get results from their printer which match what they've got on screen. Um, so what I'm going to show you is how to set up Paint Shop Pro's uh, colour management so that you can do what's called soft proofing and show on your screen what your printer is likely to produce. Even then, you may not have much success for reasons which I'll explain. So I'll show you a way, a kind of quick and dirty colour management way, if you like, that you can tweak things in order to get um, your prints at least closer to what you're seeing on screen and that, so that there's some kind of correlation going on there and you can be reasonably confident that you're going to be happy with results once they're printed out. Uh, so let's start by looking um, at the file menu in Corel Paint Shop Pro X6 uh, and scroll down here to Color Management, to the Color Management menu. Uh, and there are three options on here, Color Management, Color Working Space, and monitor calibration. The last of these I've dealt with in another video tutorial, um, so I won't go too much into that here, except you should already have calibrated your monitor. For now, select color management from the color management menu, and that will open the color management dialog box. The, the most important option with this is to check this box here, Enable Color Management. That ensures that PaintShop Pro uses a color managed workflow, and so that theoretically speaking at least, uh, you have a more, uh, well let's put it this way, a more consistent view uh, of how color is going to appear across devices. So there are two options underneath here. The first is basic color management, and the second is proofing. Uh, mostly what you'll want to do is have this set to basic color management. What proofing allows you to do is something called soft proofing, which is to show on your screen um, what an image will look like when it's printed out on a specific device. So the first thing you need to do is select your monitor profile in this pull down menu here. And this will either be one you've created yourself using the uh, calibration routine, or it may be one that was supplied with your monitor. Um, once that's done, uh, you next need to select your printer profile in the second pull-down menu here. This is my printer profile, Epson IJ Printer 07.ICC. Again, like your monitor, your printer will most likely have been provided with a profile. Now the problem here, which I'll come back to, is that printer profiles, uh, particularly for consumer inkjet printers, tend to be not that reliable. One of the reasons being, in order for a printer profile to work accurately, uh, it has to be produced for a specific ink and paper combination, and it's unlikely that the ink and paper that you're using in your printer is exactly the same in terms of its characteristics as the ink and paper that the profile was produced with. And this is where, um, for most people, color management starts to break down. It's this disparity between, um, or inaccuracy if you like, in the monitor profile because it isn't, hasn't been produced with the uh, paper and ink combination that you happen to be using. I'll come back to that in a little while, but for now, that's pretty much all you need to do to set up color management. Uh, so once you've done that, click on OK, uh, and you're ready to go. So having set up our uh, color management, we can now open up a document, take a look at it, and uh, print it out. So uh, we'll select this image in the Manage workspace and open it up in the Edit workspace. So now what would happen if we were to print this out? Uh, it wouldn't look like it does on screen because that's not the purpose of color management. But what we can do is soft proof it. We can ask PaintShop Pro to tell us what this image will look like when we print it out. And to do that, we need to go back to the color management menu, uh, select color management, and check the soft proofing radio button at the top here. There are a couple of other menus that we need to set having done that. Uh, uh, in fact, emulated device profile. Uh, and here it's selected the same uh, as our printer profile, which ordinarily is what you want, although there are some other options here. So for example, if you're printing on a commercial press um, in Europe, you would choose uh, this profile here. Or if you're in the US or your printer was using um, a, a, another press for which he will have told you the relevant profile, you can select it from this menu here. Uh, but for now, we'll, we'll select our printer profile, which is Epson IJ Printer 07.ICC. Uh, and then if we click on OK, 
uh, you can see the whole thing's gone much bluer. So what this is saying to us is, if we print this image out on my Epson printer, which is here uh, right now, it will look like this, a lot bluer than it does ordinarily on screen. Now I'm suspicious of that for the reasons that I mentioned before. Um, I could print this out, it might look like this, I very much doubt it because as I said uh, I'm almost certainly not using the same ink and paper combinations uh, as were used when the profile was originally created. So um, to a large extent this, this soft proofing process is, is fairly useless actually uh, because unless you've got an accurate profile it's not going to tell you anything that's worth knowing. So how do we overcome that um, and produce something that's more worthwhile to us? First of all, I'm going to go back and turn off soft proofing so that we can get back to see our image on screen uh, as it looked before. Uh, so if we turn, if we go basically back to basic color management and click OK, then our image will revert to the way that it was looking before. Now, I could just take pot luck and print this image and see what comes out, and that's in fact what I'm going to do, but I'm not going to do it with this image because although it's got a good range of colors in it, I want to, I want to pick an image that's got um, as broad a range of colors that are as representative as what I'd find in most of my images as possible. So I'm going to close this one. Uh, and I'm going to go back to the Manage workspace and let's see. Uh, I'm going to pick this image here to open. This is a colour test target which I've produced myself uh, and I've included in it a range of colour swatches, um, all the colours of the rainbow and, and more. The kinds of colours that you're likely to find, we've got some kind of earth colours here, we've got cyan, magenta, yellow, black, red, green and blue um, through a range of uh, densities on the right hand side here. And over here I've got some kind of fairly representative images which have got sort of natural earth colours, sky colours, skin tones, some saturated uh, oranges, reds and greens here in, in this fruit. So there's a really broad range of colours in there, the kinds of things that I'm likely to find in most of my images and will give me a fairly good idea uh, of how of, of the characteristics of my printer, how it treats those colors, how they come out when I print them and how they compare with what I've got on the screen here. Um, you can make a test target like this yourself uh, uh, if you want to save yourself some time you can download uh, this test target from gopaintshoppro.co.uk so I've printed this image uh, and what it looks like is this uh, here's the shot which I took which shows the printed image alongside what you can see on screen and you can see from this that uh, my printer far from what the soft proofing told us which was that uh, it, the, the result would be blue has come out uh, with a slight magenta a reddish cast. The actual colour swatches themselves don't look too bad but the neutral grey background, which should obviously be neutral grey, has um, quite a pronounced uh, reddish magenta tint to it. So what I'm going to do is use an adjustment layer to try and counterbalance that tint so that when we print the image out it may more closely approximate what we've got on the screen here. Uh, so let's go to the layers menu and create a new adjustment layer uh, and it's going to be a white balance adjustment layer here. So um, what I want to do is adjust the uh, white balance in all uh, across the tonal range, so in the shadows, the midtones and the highlights. When you initially open the white balance uh, adjustment uh, here, it's set for midtones, so I'm just going to click on the checkbox here to set it for shadows. Uh, and Probably what I need to do is adjust the top slider here to take out some of the red and move towards cyan uh, and adjust the magenta slider away from magenta and towards green. Uh, so what we're looking for is about, I'm looking for about minus 8 on the cyan red scale and 8 on the magenta green scale. So I'm going to duplicate that um, and you can see already that uh, we're moving away uh, from the red and towards the green in the preview uh, box here. So let's just check the midtones box and do exactly the same. This time I'm just going to highlight this and I'm going to type the values in, uh, press the tab key on the keyboard um, and enter uh, the magenta green one in the middle box there and then click on highlights and do exactly the same thing. So we've got minus 8 for cyan red, tab and 8 for red, blue, green. So let's just go back to midtones and shadows to check all three of those where we want them. You can see from the preview now this is looking a lot greener. Uh, and if we OK that, 
And then if you have a look in the layers palette up here, you can see we've got our white balance um, adjustment layer. And I can click the uh, layer visibility toggle here to turn it on and off. So that's what we had before. And this is what we have now. So on screen, it's looking a lot greener. But what I'm hoping is that when this is printed out, the effect will be to remove that red magenta cast and give us something a bit more neutral looking. Uh, and again, I've got another shot here where I've compared uh, the printout from this version. And as you can see, we've now got a much more neutral gray in the printed version, which more closely approximates what we were seeing on screen. Now, that's just one adjustment I've made there. And obviously, for your printer, this, this, this may vary. There might, may be a different white balance adjustment you have to make. You may have to make other adjustments instead of or as well as that. But the principle's the same. You simply uh, make whatever adjustments you think your image will need in order to counterbalance uh, any tonal or color um, cast that you have on your printed version. And by a process of trial and error, you should be able to get something that's reasonably close. As I've said before, you won't, um, you won't be able to print exactly what you see on screen because they're using two different physical systems. The screen is using transmitted light uh, and you're viewing the print uh, but via reflected light. So th that means that your print will never match exactly what you have on screen, but you ought to be able to get reasonably close, and certainly you should be able to get something that you're happy with in terms of uh, the overall colour and tonal balance, and something that reasonably approximates what you can see on your screen. Just to finish up with a quick word about printing, Everybody's setup will obviously vary depending on the printer they have installed, uh, but I thought it might be instructive just to have a quick look at the way I do things. Uh, this is the print dialog box for my Epson Stylus SX235 printer. Um, and uh, if we click properties here, I've got a print quality option at the top here where I've got photo quality selected for high quality photographic printing. In one sense, what you have set up in here isn't really too important because you are going to be adjusting things using an adjustment layer. So you're going to be starting from the point of whatever comes out of the printer, uh, given what you've selected here. So as long as you keep those settings consistent, it doesn't really matter whether you've got it set up one way or the other. But I've selected photo quality printing here. And if I select the advanced tab, I've also selected ICM, which basically means I'm leaving the print settings to the color management system as in as much as we have it set up so far. The only other thing I suppose worth mentioning here is there's an option here to select the kind of paper that you want to print on. And uh, it being an Epson printer, it gives me the option of a number of different um, Epson branded papers. And I'll select Epson glossy here again, as long as you use the same settings every time, you will get consistent results, uh, which your adjustment layer will correct for uh, as, as far as it can. So as long as it's consistent, that's the important thing. The specific settings themselves aren't really that important. But there is one other point worth mentioning here, and that is that earlier I mentioned that the color profiles are set up for specific ink and paper combinations and that's where a lot of this falls down for most people because they won't be using the same ink and paper and therefore they can't rely on those profiles to produce uh, consistent and accurate results which is how we ended up here in the first place. Uh, there is another advantage to that of course which is that you can use any ink and paper that you want. My Epson printer has um, budget ink in it and I use supermarket uh, glossy photo paper which is much cheaper than the Epson consumables. The fact that I'm able to use those won't affect the color management setup that I have at all whereas if you were relying on a fully color managed workflow with a profile for a specific ink and paper combination it's likely to be Epson ink and Epson paper. So this method frees you up from using expensive uh, branded consumables and you can use what you like. Obviously if you switch your ink and paper combination you will need probably to create a new, some new adjustments in order to take that into account. But as you've seen it's a pretty straightforward and relatively quick thing to be able to do. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching.